A few months ago, I had an idea to print a key ring for someone at work. And then I had the bad idea of posting on Facebook that uh, I was going to be doing it. And as I was walking through the office, someone else said, Why have I not got one of these key rings? So I went home and printed another one. And then I posted that on Facebook. And someone in another office contacted me and said, Why haven't I got a key ring? So, long story short, I have printed probably about 40 key rings so far. And uh, I mentioned it at the, at the team lunch the other day, and my team said, where's my key ring? So today I'm going to be making key rings for members of my team. What I'm going to do is sketch it out in SolidWorks. I'll just show you the one, and then I'll print it on my 3D printer. So let's get started. So a new file. It's going to be a part. Uh, let's start sketch. So sketch. Nice and easy oblong keyring. Let's just drag that out. Silent size. Uh, let's say about thirty mil. And I reckon twenty is not going to be too big to have in your pocket. good keyring will have a place to put the keys so All right that's the basics of a keyring out the way let's just let's uh extrude it make it about 5 mil again Boom. Right, so we've got the key ring. Let's put a chamfer on it. So, chamfer. Uh, two mils. Two. It's 45 mils chamfer. 45 degree chamfer, so it's probably going to be okay for the 3D printer to have it face down. Okay, that, <coughs> and finally let's add a name onto it. So, sketch Whatever the text. Pull. I'm going to use my own font. I say my own font. I don't want to use the document font because it never seems to be good enough for three D printing. But, uh, what do we want to use? We use impact. It might be easier to print with. And yeah, hold. And let's choose some big size like 24 points, I reckon. Okay, oh, boom. That looks pretty good. Now that I've got that, I'm going to just cut through. So, features, shoot, cut. I'm going to go all the way through, through all, up to the other side, yep, and then just press and go, all bodies. So that's Paul. Right, I'm going to make a couple more, so it's not there. If you look, that P and that A will be missing at the center of them. That's good. I think it looks quite cool that way. Um, alternatively, if I could use a stencil, a stencil font, but I'm not going to. So I'm going to print a couple more, and then um, I'll get back to you. One thing I never mentioned about the actual sketching of it is saving for 3D printing. So first thing I'm going to do is save it just as it is. So file, save as, and I'll choose which one I want it to be called. So M, keyring, save, yeah, replace, that's fine. Now I'm going to say, so I'll save as, and if I click on this save as type list and look at STL, that will make it the right format for printing it. So yes, I want to save that. That's it, done. And if I want to go back and change the text for my next model, I'll just go sketch, edit sketch, 
and then change the text to, I don't know, Luke. And that will automatically cut extrude it so I can go straight and save Luke again. Right, my next step is to bring all those uh, key rings into Prusa Slicer, arrange them, set my print settings, and then slice it ready to go on the printer. That's all of them in. Let's arrange them. It's not going to print very well this way, so let's lay them flat. Let's rearrange them. All right, so there they lay. Next, I'm going to be printing this on my Prusa. So I'll set to Prusa. I'll be using some PLA and, yeah, I think. 20 millimeter quality print should be fine. I don't need a brim on it. I don't need any supports because I've printed it with a 45 degree chamfer. It should be okay. Let's try it out. Right, all that's left now is to export this code onto my uh, USB stick or to my SD card. Okay, so I'll click export G code, make sure my SD card selected and then just press save. Finally I'll just exp uh, I'll just safely remove my SD card because I don't want it to ask me to test it every time I come to install it. So that's now removed, so let's get it out. So what I'm going to do is set it up on the Prusa. Um, so first thing I need to do is fit my SD card. Now I'm going to need some PLA. <clears throat> I have planned to tidy up my filament um, arrangement, but for now this will have to do. Feeding it through the top. It says. Yeah. Feeding it through the top. Now, anyone else got a 3D printer, a Prusa, that doesn't auto load filament? Mine gives me an endless trouble on the auto load. So what I'm doing is I'm just manually moving my extruder axis to load it. And I'll just load it through until it's pushing through the colour filament that I'm after. Okay, looks like we've got some filament coming through. And it's about the right colour now as well. So cool. Now what I'm going to do is just select print from SD card and choose the one I want. <coughs> While that's busy warming up, I'll quickly clean my bed. I use a cotton pad, a cotton pad and some RPA on a spray, so I spray the cotton pad and just give it a good wipe. I 
Oh, that'll do. I'll get rid of this excess, close it down, and uh, let it carry on. Now, some people worry about PLA being too warm in the enclosure. Mine's full of holes. It's not perfect. It'll just do its thing. So, let's see if this kicks off. That's well, cooling down. Never move the camera. Right, so first thing it's going to do is a uh, auto zero on auto leveling, tramming. I'm guilty of sitting and watching like the print for a lot longer than I need to, but it's like a caveman around fire. You just can't help but stare at it. The most important thing to watch though is your first layer. Make sure it's not digging into your bed. Make sure it's uh, not uh, it's sticking and not lifting off. I've had nothing but uh, well, I've had a lot of really good prints out of the, the Prusa, so I've never had anything to worry about. Um, on my A-net, which is the printer below this one, however, uh, oh, that's where I cut my teeth. That's where you learn a lot more about things is when they fall apart on you and are constantly challenging you. Um, so, let's have a quick look. It's sticking very nicely. It's busy doing the outlines at the moment. And I'll leave it there. I'll come back to you when it's done. Another quick update on the print. And we've got half an hour left. So, all done. surprisingly well. Cool beans. Alright, I'll give these a quick blast with the hot air gun and then I'll get them in my magic bag to take to work. So, Don't need very much to get rid of any a little bit of stringing. There's not a lot anyway. It just, just tidies it up a little bit. Yay! Mission accomplished. Now, um, I've made a couple videos. My audio is better in some places, worse than others. I'm doing my best. If you no notice when I was doing the, the 3D modeling stuff, I was using streamcast o -matic, I think it was, uh, which is free. We like free. But it does a watermark on the well, their little logo on the bottom left-hand corner, which is not great. If anyone's got a suggestion for a screen recorder that doesn't have a watermark on the corner or anything like that, I'd very much appreciate it if you let me know. It'll make my life a little bit easier and make the quality of the videos a little bit better. If anyone has any ideas for better videos, things I can do to make mine slightly better, I'd appreciate that kind of insights as well. And if you do like this, subscribe. If I see another subscriber, I'll probably make another video. I saw a subscriber the other day and I was like, whoa! Someone cares enough to subscribe to my stuff. That means I'm, uh, I feel like valued and that the work I'm doing is of, in, of value. Um, so, yeah, I'd appreciate if you subscribe and comment. Let's get this chat box working. I'll respond to everything I see because there's only like 18 subscribers anyway. Thanks again.